Welcome to Foosball Radio. This episode of Foosball Radio is brought to you in part by 518 Prince. For all your custom foosball apparel and swag, 518prince.com. Represent. We are back. Hey, I'm Tom Robinson, joined by Chuck Dooley and Nino Dijon with the Ultimate Foosball Podcast. Foosball Radio is celebrating the month of May. Here's hoping you're enjoying the warmer weather and mowing the grass. Now, while you relax with a cool beverage, listen to Foosball Radio for the month of more. Yeah, for the next three Saturdays, we present three interview segments with foosball legend and business person Ryan Moore. When we come back, you'll hear Ryan say... Yeah, when, you, when you start talking about soccer, um, you know, that's usually the guys that never get girlfriends in high school. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, celebrating the month of more. Ryan Moore joins us next on Foosball Radio, telling the story of foosball one player at a time. We'll be right back. Ryan Moore, and I listen to Foosball Radio. 95% of success in life is showing up, but to be truly outstanding, you have to represent. Leave that to the pros at 518 Prints. Top of the line printing for just about anything you can wear. Screen printing, embroidery, and promotional items designed to your specs. Leave your mark with 518 Prints, especially for your foosball jackets, tees, hats, bags, and more. Turnaround is rapid with the best quality material. Represent. Hit them up now at 518 Prints com or visit the brand new store at 7th State Street in downtown Troy, New York. Telling the story of foosball one player at a time. Foosball Radio. We are telling the story of foosball one player at a time. This is Foosball Radio. I'm Tom Robinson with Chuck and Nino, and we have one of the most ultimate players on the line uh, with his fiance. His name uh, uh, might ring a bell, Ryan Moore. Uh, Ryan, welcome to Foosball Radio. How's it going, guys? Going great. So I understand that uh, Iveta uh, is, is also with you. Yep, she's here. Hey, Iveta. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Good, good. So you guys are engaged to be married. Uh -oh. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think that's true. <laughs> yeah. So, good answer. So I think this is appropriate. You know, uh, Ryan, first of all, we, we, we know that you are a multi-world champion uh, when it comes to playing this game of foosball. And, uh, of course, uh, this includes singles and doubles. And now, of course, you're going to be a permanent double team. Uh, so how'd you guys meet? Uh, foosball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a kind of a wild set of stories, but uh, you know, I've known her for a while, but we really, um, you know, we started connecting in uh, Prague, and um, but I've known her for a bit, so we've 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 known each other, known of each other, I should say more so for like five years. And, Got uh, it. Nice. Got it. Got you know, sequence of events turns out, and I guess uh, she ended up liking me, which is really <laughs> hard to get girls to do, apparently. Yeah. Oh, 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 really? <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, back in the day of uh, the early days of foosball, the 70s and 80s, I guess there was such a thing as, as, as groupies. Is that still oh, the case? Oh, God, don't you do it to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no groupies these days, huh? No, no, it, it's funny because I was in uh, the Men's Health magazine, and they mentioned that all, all this groupie stuff. And Yvette, in the very beginning, she's like, no, I didn't even want to talk to you because you <laughs> you were in a magazine, with, and they were talking about groupies. And she's like, I'm not a groupie. <laughs> uh, that's right. Let's clarify that. Yes. Okay. I was like, no, 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 that wasn't me. That's not that there was groupies. Right, 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 right. And then, she, and then she started liking me after I told her. Nice. Okay. All she didn't change her mind? <laughs> No, no, the rest of the article didn't change her mind. No. So, you know, I, now, Ryan, I know you come from a royal family within foosball because of your mom being a, a huge promoter in this industry and, and uh, you know, uber successful uh, when it comes to uh, turning on uh, major tournaments. Uh, so I got to ask, though, what, you know, when you were growing up, was foosball uh, on your mind from the very beginning? You know, I always uh, 
I was always really big into it. I was really big into like baseball as well, and I was really big into video games. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you know, I was at one point could have went pro for like Halo was my big game at the time. Nice. Wow. There was a big pivotal point in my life where I decided to. I had I had a tournament that I was pretty yeah. much I was up and coming. I was guaranteed to make a grand there, or I could go to this uh, this uh, four and four Halo tournament with my team, and if we won, I think first place was like I don't know, it was like ten grand or something. Wow, uh, big difference. Split, split to four people, but here's the thing: I'm a kid. I'm guaranteed to win a thousand. My team wasn't that great. Well, those fuckers <laughs> ended up picking up a guy that was worse than me, and they ended up winning. Oh, nice! <laughs> <laughs> it was just like, oh my god, uh, I chose foosball, and that was the pivotal point of me going. Oh, okay, boy. I think I'm gonna do foosball. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, that's good because the video games are taking over the world, and it's yeah. <laughs> don't talk to my son about video games, Ryan, please, because I can't get him yeah. off of them. No, it's yeah. it's got to be the the big distraction these days when it comes to uh, bringing more more uh, players into the field because of video games kind of preventing that from happening but i'm glad you took the turn you did yeah yeah for sure at what age were you when you really started to realize okay i'm going to be a pro at this uh, about uh, as far as being a pro oh or how old were you when you started playing i started really actually trying to play at 11 11 got it and and i really like took took it serious at 14 so 14 was the point where i uh I finally, I beat a pro in a uh, Ford shootout. And, and for some reason, it triggered my brain to go, wow, I just beat a pro. Well, yeah, it was Ford shootout. I'm a little kid, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Generation that the the whole game is taken out besides one rod. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that little thing sparked the interest of maybe I could be pretty good at this. Yeah. And then uh, it just kind of went from there. So okay, we've been talking to a lot of younger players. We had a, an episode of uh, Foosball Radio about the uh, the next generation. You know, the up and coming stars. Now, each and every one of those individuals we talked to, and there's several of them. Uh, we asked them, you know, who do they who do they follow? Who are they who are they emulating? Who are they trying to be like? And your name came up every single time <laughs> so now when well, you're I need, I need to clean my act up on the table then <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's all right i think you already did yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> or you already do i, I remember playing you as a teenager you were a smack dog <laughs> <laughs> interesting interesting so i'm sure you have some interesting anecdotes from that day but uh yeah. so when you were you know when you were that age when you were you know an up-and-comer as you say 11 12 years old something like that yeah so who did you emulate? Who were you watching? You know, it was a weird thing. Like when I when I was always up and coming, I I never wanted to be like somebody. I, I just it, to me, I don't know if it was just my mindset or if I was arrogant even when I was twelve years old, which probably is true. <laughs> no, <laughs> but, but I was I would never once was like I want to be like him. You know, I always what what I always did when I came up is I looked at what a little piece of everyone's game that I really liked, and yes. then I would emulate that. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, I would never take one individual's game uh, and just be like, "That's what I want to do." You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Look at anybody's five bar series and say, "I want to do that five bar series." Or, or anything oh yeah, like yeah, for sure. I mean, but it, it was more of like what they did. You know, whether it's just a simple brush pass or a fake, or you know, like one of the most vivid memories was once again right when I won that four two. I was watching Tommy Axon just blowing people away from the two bar. That, that's what really made me go, "I want to have a nice two bar." He's just, he's literally winning every match from the two bar and laughing. At people that's <laughs> what i want to do <laughs> you know i want to laugh at people too you're thinking i, I know <laughs> yeah it's uh, it's it's motivating to watch these these individuals and and uh, knowing that uh, hey as long as i if i uh, emulate them or at least uh work on on some of the same things they're doing uh i've got success in, in hand as well you have to i mean it's like that in every sport you always you always follow the best and you you see their tactics yep and you try to emulate or take for what you can get from what they're doing and that's that's what does make you a better player every time. So uh, when you're out on the tour, and I mean, you're you're on the tour, what, full-time? Yeah, still full-time somehow. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, who, who, makes you, uh, who makes you worry? Do you, anybody that you worry about these days? Yeah, my wife. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good answer. Get uh, used to it. It's going to go on for many years. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, the, the only person that obviously everybody, everybody knows is Tony. Uh, he's the only one that has actually beaten me 
like more than I've beaten him. Yes. Um, so that, that's that's about it right now. I mean, when you have you have like Fred and Billy playing, they were kind of in the ballpark. But I, I pretty much got my hand on Billy um, the last couple of years that he did play. I, I mean, okay. he did, but I I beat him more than he beat me the last few times. Um, more so in like doubles and and stuff like that. But singles, even I think we we're pretty much even at that point. And uh, otherwise, like Fred, obviously Fred when he was over here, that was uh you know obviously huge competition. But those yes. two. Uh, they fell off the end of the world. They they sailed too far on the the, the flat earth, and they fell. <laughs> <laughs> I can't love- get them back, huh? They're- <laughs> Yeah, I've yeah, never heard that analogy. I'll, I'll use yeah. that analogy for the fu- for the future. They, 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 they sailed off the edge of the flat Earth. I love that. <laughs> Good stuff. Perfect. Uh, what are your What are your plans look like? What are you What are you looking at? Well, well just um, as soon getting as married. Term, I'll, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that is a uh, big unknown. Our range is from April to December, so we, <laughs> we've got it pretty narrowed down now. Um, sure. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Broad range. <laughs> so we're uh, that, and then yeah, you start putting all these foosball tournaments on there. We're we're probably going to be going to most of the majors, and even uh, we're, we were just talking this morning about maybe hitting a couple Europe Europe tournaments, some worlds like Garlando Worlds, and some other ones if, if being if we can. So yeah, nice. So uh, just a, a perspective here, be, you know, between you and Iveta, you're you're you've both got uh, you you of course being the American, she being the European. Uh, which is the better scene when it comes to foosball, America or Europe? Um, Hard to say. It depends on what you yeah. call better scene. Yeah. Um, well, what would it, you say you the know, differences are then? Like, there's a huge you, scene in Germany, but it can't really compare it to America. Yeah, so... Different. In America, obviously, I mean, it's, it's pretty general. Everybody knows the money's more in America. There's probably more... There, there is more players in Europe. Um, so you you have uh which one's the better scene that's hard to tell I, I sure. like this everybody from europe wants to come to america and play foosball right. okay um, and so i mean obviously i think we still got a slight edge but th- it depends on it, it's really difficult they, they definitely have the edge as far as overall players more people play regularly um the comp- competition they i'd say they probably take it a lot more serious over there than over here yes uh but they still don't play for for like money i mean they uh, i mean they do play for money don't get me wrong but it's just not i don't know i don't know it's like tough, we play yeah, for money yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. It's to we're you know we're, we're, we're playing for for the dough and the glory they're playing um to you know for the pride just, I, for the yeah maybe <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's is it similar to the uh the difference between american football and european football Oh God, no! American football. <laughs> first off, you're talking about where they throw the ball, right? Cause yeah, that's, that's yeah. American football. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when you when you start talking about soccer, um, you know, that's what? usually the guys that never get girlfriends in high school. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm just no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's only in America. In American <laughs> soccer, no. In European soccer, those they get all the girls. Yeah. Right? Superstars, oh, yeah. yes. Super yeah, rock stars. They're, they're, they're like, you know, some of the highest paying athletes in the world. Yeah, I mean, it's catching on a lot over here. I mean, but I would say, uh, no, I think they're a little more even in foosball than in, um, you know, soccer and football. Sure. Absolutely. So as you were saying, uh, in Europe, uh, foosball is bigger than America. Uh, how can we grow foosball in America so it's, you know, the size of in, in Europe? So you know, here's with- the big key takeaways that I've kind of gotten from all of it. Um, one, people in Europe are a lot more social than people in America. I, mm, I feel you're like saying we're grumpy. They get out, they, get out, <laughs> they go to bars, they, they they hang out with their friends more, they drink more. It feels like so uh, we need to drink more then. Yes, <laughs> more <laughs> social That's lubricant. Take away from that sentence. Yes, uh, and uh, another big thing too is the promoters. Um, it's really hard to find somebody that can dedicate a portion of their life for free. Yeah, and true. It seems like the they have maybe more love for the sport or for the the companionship of being with people so there's more people that are willing to be that person right um so and it's like one thing we've seen i've seen like waves in colorado where the promotion has been great it's been okay it's been up it's been down and then you had people like baller and ray step in and like all of a sudden right like now the scene out there the promote they're, they're like amazing promoters oh like, yeah yep the guy's doing four tournaments a week he's That's doing get he's doing pro pros he's doing draws he's doing brings he's he's 
on Facebook all the time. Sure. People are responding. I mean, he's it. a really good guy. I mean, Ray's, Ray's got it locked down now. Oh, yeah. Ballers always been there, you know? So, like, that's the kind of scene. Like, there was, a, there was a minute there, though, where it died down. You know, we had one tournament. I mean, there's tournaments every night, but people just don't go to them. Uh, but there was one main tournament on Saturdays for, I don't know, six, eight months a year. And then all of a sudden, Ray came in and just exploded, you know? Huh. So, it, you know, but what's the incentive for, for let, let's say, uh, you know, you're going to run out tomorrow and be like, I'm going to be the one that does that. Well, guess what? After people... People give you crap, right? Which is what my mom deals with, you know, she'll, she'll break even on tournaments, and people are giving her crap about what she's doing. She's she looks at them and goes, "Are you guys crazy? Get away from me!" Right. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a thankless job. So, yeah, oh, it's for a sure. thankless job for sure. We're well, the tournaments in Europe are more affordable. It is true too. So I the, mean, the way that they do it over there, they make the entry fees a lot cheaper. Um, so more people are willing to jump in and gotcha. And, Understood. Either. No, it's it is a cost. There's no question about it. I mean, just to, to, to take Colorado states for instance, uh, you know, for someone like ourselves who are here on the East Coast uh, to fly in, uh, you know, for for the week, which is you know what uh, four or five days, uh, and then to uh, to to put ourselves up in a hotel and and then compete. It's you know it's it's pricey. Yeah, it gets up to about a grand. Yeah. Uh, I think it's in Europe. You can get twenty dollars. Yeah, and so you know the. The big, the big takeaway, though, for American foosball, the reason why it is what it is and is, it's as big as it is or it has been is is the money. So yeah. if you take away the entry fees, you take away the, the the prize money, you take away a portion of the feel of American foosball. Yeah. So a very, there's a catch-22 here. There's not a lot of – the only, like, way to make it cheaper is, one, you know, if we had better transportation system. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, the – the the other the other th- side of it, which is what Yvette's just now saying, is if you look at the size of, of America and you look at the size of Europe, y- Europe is right. In, I mean, everywhere is right next to each other. They right. can just train somewhere, so they can take a cheap flight somewhere. Sure, sure. Yep. I mean, everybody, you know, people, uh, us Americans, we like our space, man. If you if you, <laughs> if you get a hotel room here and it's got just one bed in it and, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a a bathroom, you're, you're going to the the receptionist going, dude, I need a bigger room. What right, are you doing? right. There, they're squeezing three people into a one bedroom with three twin beds. But so, so you know, what, what I'm getting at is, is, is accommodation over there is quite a bit cheaper depending on how you do it. And, sure. and a lot of times people will just bunk together. Now, we do the same thing. I mean, yeah. you got people in America that does the same thing. But uh, a lot of us like to just be by ourselves. Sure. <laughs> yeah. we, we, could sl- we could sleep in shifts. That would work, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Celebrating the month of more with Ryan Moore. Next week, we'll present the second of three segments of Ryan's conversation. Next time, you'll hear Ryan say... I think Tony would say the exact same thing. We want competition, man. Like, when you when you get up to this level and you have one person winning or the same two people in the sure. finals, or if they're both playing, it gets old. My thanks to Chuck and Nino as we look forward to hearing from you. Drop us a line about anything at all at info at foosballradio.com. That's info at foosballradio.com. Hey, thanks for listening to Foosball Radio, the ultimate foosball podcast. We'll see you on the table. Foosball Radio was brought to you in part by 518 Prince. For all your custom foosball apparel and swag, 518prince.com. Represent. Represent.